Around this time frame, Phil Kidd is exposing himself why he believes in going to church, but his statements are typical churchianity responses, but easy to refute. Watch the narration of my notes and you will see the facts that Phil Kidd is in fact wrong according to scripture and logic itself. But now you come up with these spiritual accolades like we can have church at home because we're two or three or more gathered, there he is in the midst. This shows how idiotic and stupid you are. Because where that verse is quoted in the book of Matthew, it's not even talking about gathering together as an assembly. It's talking about banding together in prayer and unity. But God has instituted a place for us to come so that we can be as one in him and worship him in spirit and in truth. We had a man leave here the other day and told my wife, we've been missing him at church, and my wife said, I miss you. And he turned around and looked at her and said, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, let me tell you something to you that said it. You're not here, but I'm, I know you're watching, but listen to me very carefully. Then you're a better Christian than Jesus is, because even Jesus went to church. And then I always get these letters in the mail. Brother Kid, I'd love to come to Mass, but churches all over the country are filled with hypocrites. And I'm not going to lie, they probably are. But I'd rather sit with them one hour in a church pew than to burn with them forever in a lake of fire. The importance of church, I cannot stress it enough. I got saved in a church, got married in a church, got called to preach in the church, surrendered my life to the church. Learned the Bible in the church. Went to Bible college in the church. For 48 years, I've been happy with my wife and my family. We're all loving Jesus and serving the Lord. And it's all because of the local church. Don't let the devil trick you with convenience and tell you the local church is not important. It is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make in your life. And I'm not talking about church hoppers. I've got more respect for a whore hopper than I do a church hopper. Bless God, you ought to buckle down and line up with an assembly, get your name on the membership row, get you some tithing envelopes and a King James Bible, and shout the man of God when he preaches till Jesus comes again or you go to heaven. That's how important the church is. His first statement. But now you come up with these spiritual accolades. Summary definitions from Webster's 1828. Spiritual. Something of mental and intellectual holiness. Sacred and not of the flesh. Oxford English Dictionary. Accolade. An award or privilege granted as a knight is honored. So a spiritual accolade is simply, an intellectual holiness, as an award, granted as an honor. Yes I am bestowed upon by God with these, spiritual accolades, as I follow Christ in His law, perfectly recorded in the King James Bible. Thank you for that honorable compliment, Mr. Kidd. His further statements to be refuted. We can have church at home because where two or three or more are gathered there He is in the midst. But this shows how idiotic and stupid you are. Because where that verse is quoted in the book of Matthew, it's not even talking about gathering together as an assembly. It's talking about banding together in prayer and unity. But God has instituted a place for us to come so we can be as one in Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Rebuttal. Matthew 18 20 For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Here's the context. Verses 15 to 1 talks about the procedure for a brother that trespasses against you. You tell him alone, if he will not hear you, then bring two or three witnesses. If he will not hear them, then take it to the church, and if he neglects to hear the church, then he needs to be treated as a heathen and a publican. Verses 18 to 19. This means if two of you at least shall gather together and agree to touch anything on earth that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of the Father which is in heaven. Now obviously it's not talking about anything we want or when we want it. It's talking about according to the Father's will because if we ask anything according to the Father's will, He hears us. That's why we need to say as Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Not my will but thine be done. 1 John 5 14-15. And this is the confidence that we have in Him that, if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us, and if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. But Mr. Kidd is the one who's idiotic and stupid. Because he claims the passage in Matthew is talking about banding together in prayer and unity. This passage in Acts chapter 2 proves that meeting together is for prayer, fellowship, breaking bread, 
having all things common. Acts 2 41-25. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. However read these last two verses. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So they did not just meet on Sundays, they met daily, from house to house. It wasn't in a church building somewhere. Yes they also met in the temple, but that's because they chose to. That's not by commandment. The temple was the temporary place where people came to continue the Old Testament rituals from God. But that was destroyed because God saw that man corrupted it. Brethren continued meeting from house to house, not from church building to church building. Next statement to refute. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Then you're a better Christian than Jesus is because even Jesus went to church. Rebuttal. Really? Show me book chapter and verse, where he went to church and I'll believe you. Notice Mr. Kidd did not provide any. Next. Churches all over the country are filled with hypocrites. I'm not going to lie, they probably are. But I'd rather sit with them one hour in a church pew than burn with them forever in the lake of fire. Correction. Really? The word, hypocrite, is found 31 times in Scripture. Not once does it give the implication that hypocrites are to be among a biblical assembly. Are we all hypocrites? No. If that was so, then why in Matthew 23 for example did Jesus only point to the Pharisees and scribes calling them hypocrites, when in that case, He should have pointed to all of us and say that all of you are hypocrites. Summary Definition from Webster's 1828. Hypocrite. One who professes to be what he is not. Giving a false appearance. Paul gives the description of such people. 2 Timothy 3 1-7. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, trucebreakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We are to stay away from hypocrites, and they are not allowed in the assembly. A hypocrite is simply one who is deliberately a fraud. Nobody is accidentally a fraud. Next statement to refute. The importance of church I cannot stress it enough. I got saved in a church, got married in a church, got called to preach in a church, surrendered my life in the church, learned the Bible in the church, went to Bible college in the church. Rebuttal. Show me where in Scripture is the importance of church to be saved, get married, get called to preach, surrender your life, learn the Bible, or even go to Bible college? Do I have to go to church to get all these things? If not, then your so-called importance of church is irrelevant because that's just your opinion, but not Scripture truth. Last statement to refute. Bless God you ought to buckle down and line up with an assembly, get your name on the membership row, get you some tithing envelopes, and a King James Bible, and shout the man of God when he preaches till Jesus comes. Rebuttal. Where do I have to line up with an assembly? What he means by line up with one are the following statements, name on the membership, get tithing envelopes, shout the man of God when he preaches till Jesus comes. Where do I have to be a member of any church building, obtain tithing envelopes, and shout the man of God? These are all traditions of men invented by churchianity. Not biblical Christianity. So once again Mr. Phil Kidd doesn't know what he's talking about. He likes to twist Scripture out of context to preach the traditions of men, while ignoring the literal interpretation of Scripture.